Welcome to the fourth edition of Talk Death, Eco Burials and Human Composting with Katrina Spade and Joe C. So uh, this next question that we have, we actually received a few questions from an old friend of Keepers, uh, Lauren Leroy. She's actually a funeral director who blogs at littlemissfuneral.com. Uh, she was also our first guest on Talk Death with Caitlin Doty. And so Lauren asks, um, and I think this is uh, really for Joe here. As someone who lives in a community that is currently not embracing green burial practices, what would I need to do if I myself wanted a green burial? How could one request a green burial in a traditional burial cemetery or setting? Well, there are a couple of options if nothing exists. One is to explore, um, if you have enough acreage in many parts of North America, usually two and a half to five acres, um, you can actually be buried on your own property. Hmm. Um, and this is whole body burial. If we're talking cremation scattering or burial, typically it's, it's, it's fairly easy to do, but a, a whole body green burial um, would require going through a county, uh, typically, uh, or a local municipality to explore what, what permitting is required. Usually a plat is required. Um, there's a new trend, or I hope it's going to be a trend, where people can actually purchase land if they don't have, live in a rural area adjacent to a park and then um, make arrangements with the park agency to gift it back. So we are working, have been working on a model project in Texas with the Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation where we identify parcels on the outskirts to create buffer zones and then um, that land is given back so there's some tax deductibility uh, that, that benefits the, the person or family. But the other thing they can do is approach an existing cemetery operator um, about, you know, working to, to find a, a, a new option to organize a bit. That's happened in a couple of instances. The Green Barrel Council is getting ready to s uh, develop chapters, so there can be local affiliates on the ground getting this conversation going and, and talking with potential operators and potential um, existing cemeteries who may want to partner up with conservation entities in, in the community. It's really getting that conversation going locally, and there's a growing number of groups, whether they're uh, memorial societies or senior organizations or religious groups that are willing to be part of that conversation. That's what I think is most important right now. Um, our funeral directors, you know, traditional funeral directors, do they tend to be open to these kinds of ideas? Well, that's a good question because it's really hard to describe this industry with the broad stroke. Um, <laughs> around it for now almost 17 years, and every time I think I understand it, I realize that I don't. Um, it's very fragmented. So there are some people in this field that love this idea, just like they did with cremation, you know. But there are many people who are still frightened by cremation, you know, funeral directors who will do everything they can to convince a family it's, it's not a good option. It depends who you're really talking to. I think most funeral directors in North America realize today that this is coming and that they are not going to get in the way of it, like some tried to do with cremation. And the best thing that they can do is make sure, you know, it's on their menu, they're, recept they're receptive to serving families who want to have this offering and that they don't, they don't argue. But it's, um, there's still some old stalwarts out there, uh, hard to believe, but they exist probably in every field. Katrina, what type of reactions have you received from the death profession? right now from funeral directors, from cemeterians. Have you spoken to anybody? Oh yeah, I, uh, I would say it's mixed really. Um, there are, there's a tremendous community of people doing alternative death care work and that could be anyone from someone putting together a green cemetery or green burial grounds to um, you know to celebrants and death midwives helping people have home funerals to even you know a, a sort of typical funeral director who's who's trying to broaden their menu of choices. So I think mm -hmm. there's like some amazing people. I know that there's some amazing people that are doing this work. A lot of them live in happen to live in Seattle, the premier death care city. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just branding it like that right now. Um, but uh, but I'm sure and I'm sure there's plenty of sort of conventional funeral directors out there who just think what I'm doing is just so ridiculous and wacky that they don't even bother really getting in touch, honestly. But I know that the community of, of alternative death care professionals is, is, is very strong and doing work in a really collaborative way. And it's been amazing to sort of see the 
connections people will make with each other and I've been connected to so many incredible people that way because we, we really, again, we really know it's whether it's a green burial or, um, you know, a biodegradable urn or human composting, it's all the same movement actually, which is to give consumers more choices. Great. I was really shocked but delighted to see one of the leading trade association spokespeople, you know, uh, in a major publication sort of endorsed the project. I, I couldn't imagine that it happening, you know, five or ten years ago. But I, I, I think you and it speaks to your you know, what you're about as a person, but I think you probably have more receptivity than you may even know is in the field because I continue to hear really positive things. Awesome. Well who was who are yeah. you talking about there? Just just like curious. This. <laughs> New York Times with the NFDA a few years ago, or it might have been last year actually. Um, and uh, I, I can't remember who the spokesperson was, but they, act, they, you know, they go to the large trade associations for comments, and you know, we were in the point uh, at, at, at the, ten years ago. Green Burial, you know, they would talk to, to the Green Burial Council, and then they'd go back to the industry as if they were in opposition, and you know, they, the trade yeah. association. Have something to say about the fact that no one wants this, and you know, kind of an eye roll. But that wasn't happening. It was just big. Yeah. Well, you know, um, I think it's been pretty amazing, and I realized that it's it really is like you said. It's the moment. If I'd tried to do this five, seven, ten years ago, it would have fallen flat. But there's this huge death positivity movement. We're seeing death and alternative death care options in the news all the time. Um, and and it's you know the environmental this movement is is moving forward and then we've got the whole baby boomers aging thing and it's like a perfect historical moment for this to actually take off and I recognize that it's kind of dumb luck on my part that that's happening but it's great because it actually has a chance where it wouldn't have ten years ago. Yeah, it's been really exciting. We were actually just at the ICCFA, um, which is a, a trade show essentially for International Cremation and Cemetery of America essentially and um, it was really interesting we were actually neighbors with Koyo who are oh, yeah. doing the mushroom burial suit and there was really great reaction you know some people were really walking by and they're like what is this trying to feel it trying to understand it and then everyone else mm -hmm. was like wow this is this is it this is amazing and there was a really nice reaction so um, I think it's definitely infiltrating you know the industry, and we're especially, you know, just someone who receives the publications, the trade publications all the time. You're always seeing at least one article on green, which is mm -hmm. great. And it's really inspirational. And this is maybe a bit anecdotal, but I lectured a death and dying course last year, and I did a survey of the hundred or so students that were there, um, and the vast majority when asked how they want their body to be taken care of after they die, the vast majority wrote something about a green burial, few wrote about the Urban Death Project. Yeah. Um, I think it's even in, in the public sphere, it's, it's getting there. Yeah. 